Good afternoon and welcome to my presentation of writing your resume, the basics to get you started. Um, so we have just a little funny here about that moment in life where you realize you need a new job. I, uh, I would probably want to work with that tiger. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. This webinar is to address the ins and outs of a resume. We will not be speaking about cover letters at all, but we do have a webinar about cover letters. Uh, you can watch that webinar that is also available on our website and you will have all the knowledge you will need to put together a cover letter and a resume. And of course, I'm sure you're all this excited. So why have a resume? It's your marketing tool and the product you are marketing is you. It showcases knowledge, skills, experience, and outlines the link between you and the job. And that's very important that you're showing how you fit into that job. Some quick facts about resumes. Advertised positions usually get lots of participants. Resumes must catch the employer's eye in the first 10 to 15 seconds because employers, what they do normally on resumes is they just scan down the page. And that's why you see a lot of resumes are in bullet points because that makes it easier to scan and for them to catch those keywords that they want to see. And the reason that they only spend 10 to 15 seconds on it is because they get so many resumes. Um, resumes should be brief, one or two pages. If you do end up on two pages, just make sure you're not only a quarter of a page down. Make sure you're at least a half a page down on that second page. It, it just makes it look like it's unfinished if it's only a quarter way down. Make sure that the resume is targeted to the job. Um, and basically, only put in information that the employer is going to want to know about. Uh, make it a representation of you. So to help us show what a resume should be and to create an actual resume, I will be using the fictional character of Betty. So here's the basic information for Betty to be able to start the resume. So she graduated from high school in 2015. She didn't go to post-secondary school. She worked various jobs. She was a sales associate for Walmart. She worked as a private home care person. She was a cashier, she got customer service at a superstar store a uh, pharmacy assistant at the superstore, and she also volunteers with Shade. So where to begin? With your skills. If you were in an interview and an employer asked you, what skills do you have? What can you bring to my company? What would you say? Would you have difficulties with this? Um, don't feel bad if you would, because most people do. Uh, the resume, that we're gonna be doing will also help you to be able to answer this question. So of course, you need to do lots of thinking about this. Your resume should always be customized to the job for which you are applying. So how do you do this? by looking at the job description. That is very important. The job description is a must. So back to Betty. She wants to apply for the position of client care specialist at a veterinary clinic. So Betty is thinking, I want this job, but do I have the skills they are looking for? Okay, so with Betty, she wants to apply for that client care specialist position at a veterinary clinic. And she's wondering if she has those skills. So where we're starting is the job description because that's one of the most important pieces that's gonna help you put together your resume that's going to match the job description. So let's look at this job description that Betty has. So the position is a role of, of client care specialist, and it's to strengthen the human animal veterinary bond through exceptional care. Um, they're talking about being a representative for the company. Um, primary job is to ensure the client and their pet feel welcomed, expertly cared for, and immensely appreciated. 
Um, your job involves patient and client care, administrative duties, and general housekeeping duties. So then they have attributes that they're looking for. So communication skills, ability to work with different office equipment, prior knowledge of um, medical terminology, and be able to learn the veterinary software is important. Able to work effectively with or without supervision, coachable, eager to learn, possess great attention to detail and excellent organizational skills, excels in a fast paced environment, enjoys connecting with people in a genuine, friendly and compassionate manner. And the second half is the educational requirements in need high school, having that client care, customer service experience. Um, they to have a background in animal health or graduating from the vet assistant program, having first aid. Um, and then down at the bottom, they even have some more job duties. So answering phone calls, engaging with the clients and uh, providing great service, essentially. So we have the job description. So the next thing you should do is highlight the skills on the job description that you see as important. Now, something that I should say about this job description is it's very good. Um, you're not gonna be so lucky with every job that you go to apply for. Some employers, just, they just don't put out the best job descriptions. So when that happens, you need to research the company. If you know someone that works for them, you can ask some questions about what they're looking for and what type of skills do they want to see. Um, you can look them up on their website if they have one. Um, and if they do, they might have a mission statement and their values there that might help you with that as well. So you're going to have this job description in front of you, probably, paper, and you get a highlighter, and you're going to highlight what you think is important what's coming out at you in that job description. So for Betty, what she decided to highlight was um, strengthen human animal veterinary bond, exceptional care, being first and last contact, making the client and their pet feel welcomed, patient and client care, administrative duties, general housekeeping duties, communication skills, office equipment, having knowledge of that. Um, medical terminology, being able to learn the software, working with or without supervision, uh, coachable, eager, attention to detail, excellent organizational skills, fast-paced environment, genuine, friendly, and compassionate, uh, client care, customer service experience, relevant background in animal health, answer incoming customer inquiries, actively listening to their concerns, offer support and solutions to customers. So having that kind of spread all over can make it a little bit harder to see what it is you should be focusing on. So Betty decided to put all of those things she highlighted into a list. So even that can seem a bit overwhelming, thinking, gosh, how am I going to address all this in my resume? So she went a step further for organizing this. And she actually grouped some of the skills together because a lot of the skills, you could see that they fit together in, in certain categories. So she has this one here of the strength in the human animal veterinarian bond, genuine, friendly, compassionate, client and pet feel welcome to sexual care, parent and, sorry, patient and client care client care, customer service experience. So this is focusing around the care for the animals and the clients and customer service. This one is more about uh, the communication skills. So being the first and last contact, and so, and so right there, communication skills, actively listening, offering support and solutions, and answering incoming inquiries. This one is more focused around um, the administrative duties. So knowing the office equipment, knowing medical terminology, being able to use software, attention to detail, excellent organizational skills. Then this one here um, is about basically being able to work and work well, being able to work fast paced, you're eager to, eager to learn, you'll listen to instructions. Um, and then this one is just by itself because it was the only place, it was only mentioned once, general housekeeping duties. And the next one that was also by itself was the relevant background in animal health. 
So what Betty has decided to do is to take each of these groups separately. So we had that huge list that could seem overwhelming. Now she's broken it down into six doable sections um, to address what they're wanting. So she's going to take one group at a time and she's going to think about it and she's going to think about her past experience and she's just going to write some notes of things that could go into that. So um, the first one with that um, care and client care and animal care, she was writing that she's able to bond with all these groups separately. Um, every job has involved customer and client interaction, providing a caring, caring environment as a private care worker. She, she wrote down about her work at Shade Tree, handled cats and dogs that were timid and able to make them feel more comfortable by being calm and having patience. Comfy room one-on-one -on -one with peace and quiet talk. Have always enjoyed helping others from the time as sales associate, helped people find product, and if we couldn't find it, made arrangements for them to find product. Cashier wanted to make sure everyone had a great experience, provided friendly service with a smile. Moved quickly from cashier to a pharmacy assistant, and it was a promotion. So what Betty's doing here is she's not worrying about being grammatically correct or even spelling things correctly, because this isn't your resume, resume at this point. This is you um, just thinking about how you have those skills. And this is what I do with a lot of my clients that come in my office and we're trying to work on a resume. I will break down the skills and I will say, well, how do you have that skill? Um, and if even that's too difficult to really remember back, I will start with, okay, well, you worked here as this. Just tell me what you do. I have no idea what you did. So you tell me what you did day to day. And then from there, we can work on, well, the skills that, are starting to come out just by telling me day-to-day -day things. So you can think of it that way too. So the next one was communication. And she said, understand how important our part in a person's day can be. Experience this with private home care, also with animals. When working with public, I have always had to deal with frustrated customers and try to help them. So they will leave me not, they will leave me not frustrated. So that's not a boat. Betty not being frustrated with the client leaving not frustrated. I never say I don't know or I can't help. I find out the answer and or I get someone to help. Answer phones and most recent job. So when addressing those administrative duties and office duties and medical terminology. So she said I had to use computer systems and debit slash credit machines and all jobs. Had to learn each of the different software that every job used. I'm quite computer savvy, so I learned the new software systems quickly. Because of my experience in private home care, I had to know some medical terminology. I needed to know what client may be suffering with, names of medications, how much of each, how clients need it to be handled. This also applied to shade. Animals would have different conditions and be on different medications. I helped to administer medication. Use Microsoft programs personally, Hotmail, Calendar, Word, PowerPoint. These skills followed me from high school and I have always used them. And then with the working with or without supervision, coachable, eager, fast-paced environment, pharmacy assistant could be hectic. We needed to count the medication, properly label the bottle and file it for pickup. This was constant sometimes because there were so many orders coming in. I was taught new skills in every job. I learned how to hold animals when they were getting injections. I needed to learn the cash register system at each job and do it being trained properly. I am able to stay on task and get the tasks that need to be completed by the end of the day. So right up here is supposed to be the housekeeping duties. But for some reason, it disappeared. Um, so with the housekeeping duties, this was a big part of private care. I needed to sweep, vacuum, and mop floors, dust it clean, bathroom. I have Limits because of my work in private care and at the superstore, so, and relevant background in animal health, health. So she goes into working at J Tree since 2017. She started cleaning litter boxes and playing with them to provide enrich, enrichment. It moved up to helping administer medications, weighing animals, and working with animals that needed more attention to socialize them. Working with animals is what my passion is. I also have my own animals. I have four cats that are from rescues and I have three bunnies I rescued when found as babies. I brought the bunnies in not knowing how to take care of them and was able to feed them and help them grow and become the bunnies they are today. 
So Benny's next step is to, now that she's written some things about each category of skills that the employer is looking for, now she's going to start typing up her resume. So Betty will be using Microsoft Word to type up her resume. If you don't have Microsoft Word, um, you can purchase it online or there's a free program that is called Open Office. And this program is supposed to be comparable to Microsoft Word, but it's free. So the website is www.openoffice.org. And of course, if you have a Mac computer, then they have their own version that's not Microsoft, but still works similarly. So resume format. These are some of the things that can go into your resume as headings. Um, but you can use different things. Uh, for example, the career profile or employment objective may or may not be used in your resume. This is all going to depend on if you use a cover letter. If you use a cover letter, that won't be in there. If you don't use a cover letter, you might want to have it in your resume because it'll give a little paragraph of, of what it is that you're wanting to do and a little bit about why you want this job. Um, so Betty is not going to be having a cover letter. So she will be using this section in her resume. So, and as same as the rest of these, so contact information, skills summary, employment history, education, training, professional development, volunteer activities, community involvement, and other could be other titles that you could think of on your own. Um, there's no right or wrong necessarily when it comes to putting together a resume. Um, these headings, as, so, as long as you follow some of the basic rules of um, having some headings, doing bullet points when at all possible to make it easier to read, those are the basics. Um, you want a resume that is made for you. So a lot of people will come in and say, well, someone else told me to do my resume this way, and then another person told me to do my resume this way, and then what do you think? And one of the first things I say is this resume is yours, and you want it to feel like you, and you want it to be your voice. Um, it's, it's not about getting a correct formula. It's about making it for what you want it to be in an organized manner. So little changes don't need to happen if people are, are picking little changes at your resume that aren't massive. So make sure that it's a characterization of you. So we are ready to get started. And I'm just going to leave this gift here just for a second because I think you need a couple of seconds to really appreciate how funny this is. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so Betty started her resume with writing down her name and her contact information. Um, there's debate on whether to even put your address in there. Some people do, some people don't. It's completely your choice to do so or not do. Some people argue that if you put on your, um, res uh, sorry, put on your address and you live further away from where you wanna work, some employers might not want to hire you because they're thinking, well, on stormy days, would they be able to get here and, and things like that. And then other people put it on because they live close by and that might be helpful. So it's completely your choice as to whether you want to put on your address or not. So career profile here. Uh, this can also be called career summary profile statement, resume profile, or summary of qualifications. So you can pick what works best for you. This is the section where you're gonna write a little paragraph that if you don't have a cover letter, it's gonna go here. So um, you wanna grab the employer's attention by putting keywords from the job description here. As you can see, Betty started her resume by putting down her name, address, email address, and phone number. Um, these are the must-haves of a resume, and like I already talked about the address. Do not attach a picture to your resume. It's not common practice in our location. Uh, the first thing Betty is going to work on is her career profile. Once she listened to my variations of what this could be called, she's going to call her summary of qualifications. She likes that the best, and she's going to use that. 
So tips for writing a resume profile. I got this picture off of a website called Balanced Careers, and it's a fantastic resource um, for all your employment needs from the time that you're looking for work, trying to figure that out, to when you maybe be in a job and trying to figure that out, to maybe leaving that job and trying to get another job. It covers everything. Um, so I highly recommend um, you looking, doing a deep dive in uh, the balanced careers because some things that you end up finding out you didn't even realize that you wanted to know about. So they're saying to be concise, focus on the future, place keywords at the top of page where the employer can't miss them. This goes back to the employer only spending 10 to 15 seconds on it and starting at the top and scanning down with their eyes. And focus on the job listing. So Betty started to write her summary of qualifications, and this is as far as she could get. Uh, this can be a daunting task for many people, um, and maybe that's not where you need to start. So to help get Betty thinking about what she has done for work experience and the skills associated with each job, we are going to start with the employment history part of the resume. So this is what Betty came up with when she wrote the employment history part of her resume. So you'll see it's not, um, it's not too in depth with what she has. Um, she keeps it quite basic, was given prescriptions to fill, handle cash and use debit credit machine, waited on customers, provided housekeeping for the client, um, help customers find products, stock and straighten up shelves. So, the problem with this is they're not reflecting these um, skill sentences that are under here. They're not really sentences. Um, there's more just like points and it's not explaining how these relate to what the employer is looking for. So um, we need to go back to a few things to help write these skill sentences. We need what she wrote when she broke down the job descriptions into groups and some resources to help with wording. So you'll recognize this. This is what I showed you at the beginning when she broke down each group and she just kind of spitballed and wrote down how she had some of those skills. So she's going to use this so you can picture Betty uh, sitting down and having that in front of her with the job description broken down. Then there are resources uh, with action verbs that can help you to write skill sentences. So action verbs, just a word, just focusing on a word that kind of fits with something you did in the past could help you write that skill sentence. And this is just a small list of action verbs. If you Google um, verbs for resumes and things like that, you'll get so many different lists. Um, because this is just quite a small list, so it might not, a lot of these words might not tickle your fancy. So you can use the action verb, so Betty would have that in front of her as well. And then uh, these are a list of soft skills. So we're going to be talking just for a minute about soft skills versus hard skills. So soft skills are the skills that you possess that you can take from job to job to job. They're also called transferable skills. So, um, and these are the skills that employers are looking for the most. So this document broke down, um, it's going to be in six main areas of soft skills, and then they're broken down under those. Um, and the next slide will show you the other three groups. So seeing some of these words might trigger something. Um, for example, communication. So Betty's thinking every job I worked in, I had to talk to people in person, on phone, by email. And then there's some more. And again, this is another list that you can Google um, soft skills for resumes and you'll find even more. So another example, uh, customer service is in here somewhere, right there. Um, Got Betty thinking a lot of experience in this, work to make customers happy. So she's gonna have those 
that list down in front of her to help her make those skill sentences. So hard skills, hard skills, so where soft skills are transferable from job to job to job, no matter what it is, hard skills aren't as easily transferable because hard skills have to do with very specific jobs and positions. Um, and they're typically listed in the job postings and job descriptions. So you can see here like carpentry, uh, design, languages, um, nursing, very specific. So hard skills, the hard skills for Betty are gonna be that, um, be her computers technology and her animal health knowledge are gonna be her hard skills that she knows for this job. So um, Betty took those resources that were shown. So the groups of um, the skills broken up, uh, the list of the action verbs and the list of the soft skills. And another resource she also used was thesaurus.com. So um, thesaurus.com is my secret weapon when I'm writing resumes, cover letters, or anything. If there's a word that I'm using and I'm like, it doesn't seem fancy enough, or I've used the same word over and over again, I need to find a different word. You go to thesaurus.com and you type in the word that you want a different word for, and it will bring you up a list of other words that you can use to mean the same thing. And then you pick what, and don't pick the fanciest word, pick something that you would actually say that is not completely off the wall for your type of personality. So with using these resources, this is what she was able to do with her work history and explain what she did in each job and then connecting it to the job she was applying for. So she did more thorough skill sentences. Um, you will also see as she was working on the work history, she was able to start relevant skills. Now, relevant skills are at the top, and they're those skills that the employer is looking to see the most, and they're right at the top because, again, that 10, 15 seconds scanning down, it's going to to catch their eye first. Uh, you also see that the last job down here, she hasn't done much with because she hasn't um, figured out she even wants to keep that in her resume. She might have what she needs just with these jobs here. She's going to keep it there for now until the final product and decide. So let's compare to where Betty started her resume to where she is now. So she started here with just these little bit of work history, little bit of description. And then she was able to get into this a lot more with the help of those resources that we were talking about. So an example um, was given prescriptions to fill with the pharmacy assistant. Um, so she added to that and she put generate shorter wait times for clients by efficiently filling prescriptions and organize them, and organizing them in pickup drawers. So that says so much more than just was given prescriptions to fill. It sounds like it's really simple when you think about it. She was able to capture how busy it could probably be there. Um, having a lineup of people and figuring a way to make things move quicker. Um, another one, waited on customers on, at the Atlantic Superstore. So um, she, so just saying waited on customers, she put delivered friendly and courteous service to customers. That's, that also says a lot more. So there's lots of people that just wait on customers, but there's not, not everyone has those um, friendly and courteous services with customers. So that's a good thing to share. So once Betty had her employment history written with skill sentences that applied to each job, that made it easy for her to write some top relevant skills. She grouped, she again used the same resources, the description that she grouped, the verbs list, the soft skills list, and the thesaurus.com. So some tips for writing relevant skills. So these should be the top skills the client is looking for. Uh, look at the job description as we talked about. When you group the skills like Betty did, they will be popping out at you. 
Betty, she could see the skills were administration, technology, customer service, be a good worker, and of course, handling and caring for animals. These are the things she addressed in her relevant skills. Uh, do not repeat what you have under each job in the relevant skill, skill list. Uh, they may overlap a bit, but make sure you're saying something a bit different. Um, if you're gonna use the skill up in the relevant skills, and then you're gonna use it down in one of your jobs, have it be a diff bit different so you're just saying a little bit more about that skill. Um, and because you, you also don't wanna waste the limit space you have, on a resume to be able to tell them how perfect you are for the job. And for relevant skills, keep it at five or six points maximum, four at a minimum. Um, so let me show you what Betty did on paper to help her make these skill sentences. So she did even more than what I've showed you yet. So she of course had those groupings, list groupings um, of skills, the verbs, the soft skills, thesaurus.com, but she went and took the job description broken down with what she had written and she started um, thinking about how she could put some of these things she really liked into sentences so she was circling some really important things that she wanted to put in so um, she circled the human animal veterinarian bond and she was able to say she had a client and pharmacist connection. So she kind of had something like that going on. Um, she has down here communication skills and she, she uh, put the word built and she got that from the action verb list because she started to think um, about over the years she was building her communication skills to where they are now. So she's thinking she might want to use that word. Um, and saying how she had to deal with frustrated customers, conflict resolution, that was, I believe, on the soft skill list. So she's writing down some key words that she might wanna use in her sentences. So here's another one. So she had the, the word, words had to use computer systems. Um, and she came up with the word operated with those lists. Um, Okay, and then the last page. So I need it to sweep vacuum off for us. So she picked the word performed. Um, here's an example of her using the thesaurus. Um, she was trying to come up with a different word for working or work. Um, and she didn't really find anything that worked for her there, but she found other words that she liked the bit of a sentence of assigned with trust to do whatever. So she really liked that. So she's thinking she might use that somewhere. So you are probably thinking that it seems like writing a resume is strenuous and detailed and it seems you must think about every single sentence. Well, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Um, a resume is hard work. If you want it to be a good resume because you really want that job and you do have to think about every single sentence because you only have so much space and you want every sentence to be telling the employer something that they're gonna wanna know. So once Betty finished her relevant skills, she then went on to finish writing her summary of qualifications. Remember that was, the paragraph right at the top that was taking the place of a cover letter that she was struggling with. So she wrote this in a way to answer the question that we asked earlier. If we were to hire you, what would you bring to the company? This came easier to her once she had broken down each job and thought about what she did at each job and what skills she used at each job. And it also helped her to break down the job description and really see what the main skills they were looking so let's take a look at Betty's resume with all the info she thinks she needs to put in the resume to make a good impression. So this is the first page of Betty's resume and you'll see just by looking at it, um, it looks pretty good for space. Um, some people feel they need to fill it in a lot and to the point that it's more black than white. 
Um, it may seem silly, but you should have more white than black because I've seen resumes where it's just, they have bullet points, but it's right all, they're all right to the end and it just becomes this rectangular bit of black. And that can be overwhelming for someone that's trying to read it. Um, so white spaces are a good thing. Um, so she got her summary of qualifications completed. Um, she, uh, relevant skills, and she has one, two, three, four, five. And then she has um, the points of, and the skills under each job. And this is her second half of the resume where she finished her um, job history and she also put her in her education. Um, and she put a couple of things under there that she would have done in high school because it wasn't that long ago uh, where she took an advanced computer course and she completed a typing course that she still uses today basically and then she wanted to put down some additional training so this is where um, things can come in where i said you can use some different headings depending on what you want to tell the employer so um betty could have even maybe done because i know some people like to put hobbies in there if you put hobbies in it should be relevant to the job. So if Betty was to put hobbies in here and it, she said that she liked to knit and sew, it doesn't really fit with this, but if she put down hobbies like, I like taking care of my animals, I like working with shade to rescue animals and things like that, that would fit. So if your hobbies that you truly like don't really match with the job, don't put them in. So let's just go back here for one moment. Um, so I just want to look at her summary of qualifications a little bit more because this is something that is hard to write. So she said, I possess, I possess the skills necessary for this position. I have extensive skills in relation to administrative duties and a wide variety of technological skills. I have always worked with the public and have developed a knack for friendly customer service. I always ensure the customer was listened to and that their needs were fulfilled. I am a caring and compassionate person with experience providing care for those in need, including seniors and animals. So that sounds pretty good. So now you're probably thinking, wow, that turned out pretty good. I think I'm done my resume if you were Betty. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, sorry to show you this again but um there's a little ways a little bit more that you have to do with your resume um to kind of finish it off um but there's no denying that up to this point betty has done a good job going through it and when you use this to help you write your resume i'm sure by this time you're going to feel a pretty good resume too so you should review the actual job description again um not the one that betty broke up the group of skills into, but the actual job description and compare that to your resume. Check to see if you have used some words from the job description in your resume. And you're probably asking why, why would I need to do that? Well, this is because of the dreaded ATS. And I know you're probably thinking, and I'm thinking, so um, ATS isn't as scary as it seems. Um, ATS stands for Automatic Tracking System. Um, now with the Automatic Tracking System, it is a computer software that when you apply for jobs online, the first thing that happens is this computer reads your resume and it's reading for keywords. Um, so if it doesn't get enough keywords or it doesn't see keywords, it's not going to move your resume to a human being. So you need to keep that in mind. Some places you may know automatically they're a smaller place, they're not going to have um, these computer software programs, but especially if they ask you to do it through email. But um, places like Walmart and the Superstore, 
they're big companies and they get so many resumes, they need to have this computer software so that they can narrow down who they actually, the resumes they actually look at. So that's what that system is for. It can be frustrating. So the job description is the key to the keywords. Did you see what I did there? I can be very smart sometimes. So let's check out what Betty did to see if she has enough of the words in the job description in her resume. So she went back to the original job description she had where she had highlighted some of the keywords. And what she did is she would have had this on the table with her and her resume on the table with her. And she started comparing the two. And what she did was she actually started putting check marks beside the words that, and circling the words that she saw on her resume and putting check marks by each time she saw them so that she, she could see what words were in her resume and how many times, which is also useful to know. Um, and you'll see that she circled high school diploma because. Um, they said that's a requirement, so she wanted to make sure she had that in her resume. Did the same thing here. So this is her resume that she had sitting beside her while she's comparing the two. Um, you'll see that she high also, not only did she circle and check job description to see what words, but then she also highlighted the words that from the job description that are in her resume, just to be able to have a visual as to how many keywords are there. And that's her second page. So um, you don't need to have all of the words that are in the job description that you think are important in your resume. Um, you need to have enough words that the computer system will want to send your resume to a human, maybe around 50% as to what's in the job description. Um, honestly, I'm just kind of throwing that number out there because I honestly don't even know how many words the computer systems want to pick up so it's really a judgment call as to how many words you think is enough so you need to have a balance of using the words but not using so many that what you were saying doesn't make sense you need to use the words to your benefit because if you're thinking you know what i'm just going to jam all those keywords in there so it gets zipped right past that computer system but the problem with that is if you do that and it doesn't really make sense, yes, it gets past the computer system, but then it's seeing a human and the human isn't gonna be saying, well, what is this? And they probably won't look at it any further. So you have to have that balance. So are we done now? No, <laughs> we're getting very close though. So these are the final steps, I promise. Now that Betty is satisfied with what she has put in her resume, so she was double checking that um, she had the words that were in the job description enough in her resume, she felt she had enough, um, and that she's conveyed the message she wants the employer to receive. She just has a couple more things. She needs to format the resume um, because it's basically all one font. And the headings aren't really standing out or anything. Uh, proofreading it a few times. Um, she doesn't want a spelling or a grammar error to take her over the running for the job. Because, I mean, I'm sure you all know this. You read something that you spent a lot of time on it. And at, at some point, your brain will see those words, but they will see them differently so that you think they're okay. And you'll skip over it. Um, and getting someone else to proofread it. That's when you will pick up on those things that maybe those little words that you thought were fine and they actually weren't. And then it'd be even a bonus if you have that other person read the job description first. So Betty completed the above task. And so let's take a look at the final product. So you'll see that she made the um, headings stand out a little bit more so that there's clear breaks of what she is saying um, so that it's easier to follow. 
You will also see that she did decide to take out that last job because she just realized that last job was just going to say the same thing she's already set up here, so it wasn't needed. Um, so with making those headings, there's very clear groupings of her resume that makes it easier to find everything. And again, I can't stress this enough, is the fact that um, you have to make this your own. Follow some of these general rules, but make it your own. Having skill sentences, having the headings, having bullet points, those are the main things. But other than that, if you want to get a little bit creative, you think, I want to tell them this, and I want to tell them it in this way, you can try it. And if you don't get any um, callbacks from it, then maybe it didn't work. Maybe you could try something different. So just to review, so Betty started with not knowing where to start to starting with the job description, breaking that down into groups, talking a little bit about those groups of skills that she had and why she had them, and then starting to put that in the resume under employment history first, because that was the easiest place to start, to think about each job and what she did, and the skills, and she used um, the job description, the action verbs, um, the soft skills, the thesaurus to help her write those sentences. Um, and then she made sure she went over her resume with a fine tooth comb to make sure that every sentence was saying something she wanted it to say. So, and that's how it's done. Um, so this webinar should be able to help you put together your resume. Um, if you ever feel that you've done all this and it looks pretty good, but you're not quite sure, um, you can always get help from us. Uh, you can come in to our, our office and work on the computer and get a little bit of help here and there with it. Or if you feel you need more support with it, you can get a case manager. Of course, this isn't happening yet in our offices. Once we are open and have our new normal in place with COVID-19, um, then you can do that. So keep an eye out for that. So you can access this webinar and others on our YouTube channel. Like I mentioned, uh, the cover letters, just one of them. There's quite a few webinars on our channel now. Um, so you type in for YouTube channel, Nova Scotia Works Employment Solutions Society, and this is the link actually. And you can contact us by phone, 543-2479, and toll free, 1-866-711-0411. Um, you can, oh, whoops, didn't want that right then. <laughs> you can, you saw my cute one too soon. Uh, email, info at employmentsolutions.ca, and our website is www.empsolutions.ca. And um, our website also has job postings that you may not see anywhere else. And it has these webinars on there. So we have lots of good stuff on our website. So I highly recommend going there. So now my cute post, uh, are there any questions? So there were no questions with this live webinar today. But if at any point you do have questions on this webinar, um, please email us at the at info at empsolutions.ca and we can um, help you with any questions you might have on your resume and many other topics as well. So I thank you for joining. Um, my name is Darlene Wynott. I am a case manager at Employment Solutions Society. And if you ever need help with any employment needs, we are here to help. Thank you.